ask you all to talk quite often, I now need to give a talk. Um, so here we are, I'm going to talk about Amazon SQS. So to introduce myself first of all, I use that photo everywhere, it's about 10 years old, uh, I should probably get a new one. Uh, that's my Twitter handle, and if I'm not organising PHP Southwest, I'm the web team lead for a company called Gradwell, who are based in Bath. Uh, I'm a theatre tech in my spare time, so in about three weeks I'm off to Glastonbury to spend a week trying not to get wet and muddy. Uh, I'm a theme park fan, so if I'm not behind the stage somewhere, I'm probably on a roller coaster, and then if I'm not doing any of those, I'll probably try and be trying to take a photo. So what is Amazon SQS? That's what Amazon says SQS is. It's essentially a queuing system, and it's one of Amazon's services. Um, if you're familiar with queuing systems such as uh, Gearman or Elastic Beanstalk, um, it's the same sort of, not Elastic Beanstalk, Beanstalk, uh, it's a similar sort of idea. The best way to find out about queues is not to listen to my talk. There is a wonderful talk done by Doug uh, from the last Lightning Talks about Beanstalk, and there is a talk from Justin Carmoni uh, at PHP Northwest who talks about asynchronous workers, and that gives quite a good introduction to queues as well. But essentially, the idea of using queues is to be able to queue jobs that we don't want to process whilst the user is interacting. So for us at Gradwell, we've just started using this for sending emails. Um, we've changed our email service to use uh, SendGrid, and so we've come up with one unified approach that our VoIP systems, our web systems, and anything else can fund their email requests into SQS, and then we process the email. Um, if anyone follows me on Twitter, you'll see I tweeted about, we now have sent on an invoice, we go from Zora, our billing system, into SQS, run it through a script, talk to S3 for a bit, go back to SQS, finally talk to SendGrid, and then it appears in your inbox. Which all seems a little bit excessive for sending an email, but it just about works, or it did when I kicked it yesterday. Um, it's suitable for helping handle incoming data and content as well, so our third party billing system tells us you've got a new invoice, someone's failed to pay, we put these straight into a queue and then we have dedicated workers deal with that. So some of those are PHP, we also have people who write Perl and Java, and so they can write dedicated workers and work off of that. And it's also good for scaling large tasks, so if you're sort of converting images into different formats, needing to render videos, you probably don't want to do that whilst the user is sat there waiting. Uh, for us, we do it for our CBR reports, so our customers can request all of their call logs. For some of these, there are hundreds of thousands of lines and we have to look at tariff costs and things like that, so we put it into a queue. Uh, process it and then let them know when it's done. Why SQS? So I ma mentioned the other services. The best thing about this is it's hosted by Amazon and it's free to get started. You can do a million requests a month for free. So if you're wanting to play with queues for the first time and try things out, you haven't got to worry about setting up the service yourself. Even once you've gone beyond that, it's 50 cents per million requests. So it's not going to break the bank unless you're doing something quite excessive. You can use Amazon Web Services SDK, so if you've used it for S3 already or for EC2 management, you've already got the functionality for doing uh, SQS there, so you can take advantage of that. I have two snippets of code in my entire talk, and it will, uh, I'll show you how to use that later. So queues, what's a queue? It holds a message to be processed. That's as, as exciting as it gets. On Amazon, it's each queue is uniquely named per the account. So if I've got a queue called email, I can't have another uh, queue called email. Um, what you do need to think about with that is how you're going to run your dev environment. So we've got, we discussed two approaches of doing it. You could either prefix all your queue names with dev something and then rely on their security controls and hope that you get it right and it doesn't go horribly wrong. Or we've actually set up a dev Amazon services account. Our dev testing doesn't get beyond a million requests a month, so if we're using a separate account, it's not costing us anything, so that works quite well. Queues in Amazon have the ability to build in a delay, so if you don't want to act on a message straight away, you can delay it up to 15 minutes, and when you're creating queues, you can either do it through their user interface and do all the configuration through there, or you can create it through their API. So into our one notification handler, if someone spe suddenly specifies a new queue we haven't created before, in the background it goes and creates the queue for us. Now if it does that, there's not necessarily a worker to act on it, but some monitoring might pick up and go, hold on, you've suddenly got a random queue with some jobs building up here. So 
messages sit on the queue and is, it is the actual job you want processed. They're essentially a blob of data. In Amazon SQS, you can have them up to 256 kilobytes. Um, you can go beyond that and tie it in with S3. I know their Java SDK allows you to do that. I don't know how easy it is, uh, sort of with the PHP one. We've actually defined that as a JSON object so that all of our queued messages have a standard format, so it's got a data attribute, it's got an expiry time attribute. We could have actually used the built-in Amazon attributes option. It can store up to 10 attributes, but we were a bit blind and didn't realize that was available at the time. So we might nicely wrote our own format and then went, oh, we'll just use our own format for now. <laughs> um, we might convert over inside. So creating a message, I said I have two bits of code. Here's the first one. Um, so we've got the Amazon Web Services clients. You pass it the queue URL and then the message body. So I've just put a string of hello world here. That's it for creating a message. At that point, the message appears on your queue and hopefully everything's dandy. What you do need to know is the queue URL. So it is based on your Amazon region, a unique identifier for your account, and then the queue name. If you don't know the queue URL, it is possible through an API call to look up the URL from just the name. So you just need to keep in mind that you might need to do two requests to find that out. Retrieving a message, very similar approach. Uh, call to the client to receive the message, pass the URL, and then it returns the next message in the queue. Um, it actually returns a response model because the PHP SDK sort of wraps up Guzzle, so you need to check for a messages attribute. If that doesn't exist, it means there's no messages in the queue. Um, so it does return sort of a successful response even if there are no messages. You've got two ways of querying. If, you, if there is a message, you can either constantly poll it, or you can set up long polling, so you can leave it connected for a couple of minutes, and then as soon as it ret returns something, it will pass a message back to you. On each sort of queue, you can define what's called a visibility period. So this means that if you retrieve a message from a queue, for that visibility period, it locks a message out, so it won't make it available to anything else that's trying to use the same queue. Um, at the end of that time period, it puts it back into the queue, and then another worker can pick it up. It's important to remember to set the visibility period to be longer than it takes to process the message and remove it. Otherwise, you'll be midway through uh, processing it, it will go back onto the queue and then something else will start doing it. Don't ask us how we found that one out. <laughs> um, a few gotchas, as I've sort of hinted towards a few of these. First in, first out is not guaranteed. If you submit two messages, to Amazon within the same period of time, they might come, up in a, come back in a slightly different order. What it does guarantee is that you will always get messages returned in the same order. So if you've got A and then B the first time and return them both to the queue, you'll get A and then B back again. Um, they guarantee what's called at least once delivery. Because of its distributed nature, they don't guarantee that if you've marked off the visibility or deleted it, that it would have passed on to the other servers in time. So if your next request suddenly requests something, you could get the same message back. We haven't actually seen that happen so far, so whether it's just Amazon's big warning saying you should be aware of this, or whether it's because we haven't put enough traffic for it yet, we don't know. But you need to at least make whatever's processing the message able to handle it appearing twice. So if you're using it for billing customers, you probably want to do a check that you haven't billed them already first of all. Uh, sending two bills probably isn't going to be their most favorite thing. Um, if you're sending them an email to let them know that they've got a new voicemail, it's possibly not the worst thing in the world if they suddenly get a second email, or they're not great. The other thing to keep an eye on is that each queue has a retention period. So if you put a message into a queue and then don't read from the queue, the default is four days, so it will stay there for before it disappears, and you can set up for a maximum of 14 days. Um, where you might want to remember this is when developing things, if on the Friday, you decide to put a message in the queue, and then you have Saturday and Sunday off, then it's a bank holiday Monday, and you get back on Tuesday and decide, oh, I'll just finish working on some of the stuff I put in there. Why is the queue empty? Um, that's probably what's caught you out. And there's a little bit more that I haven't gone into in depth. So security policies, if anyone's familiar with Amazon Web Services and the different users you can set up, you can start applying policies based on names. So I mentioned about the dev thing earlier, have a user who can only access queues prefixed with dev. Um, we've got different users so that some of our services can only write into queues, others can read from them. 
um, and so you can add controls that way. I mentioned message attributes, you can add up to 10 additional attributes onto a message so that you can put that metadata available. <coughs> Dead letter queues is the concept of if you read a message off a queue, can't process it, so return it back, you can put a maximum limit on that and then at that point it can actually fire it off into a separate queue for looking at later. So you can essentially have a queue that monitoring can say this wasn't processed for some reason. And then batch processing. So if one million requests for free wasn't enough, you can start building things up in batches. And as long as it's under 256 kilobytes, it counts as one request. So you can sort of bring down 10 <coughs> messages together, process them all, and then return all 10 back as being complete, and it can uh, take them off the queue. I've rattled through that quite quickly. Is there any questions on Amazon SQS? Yes? I think you might have mentioned this, but uh, is it polling only, or is there a... There is a long polling option. Is there a, an event option? Will they push to you if they... We if haven't looked into that, but I believe you can tie it into another Amazon service, service <coughs> Amazon SNS, and then it can do the polling, and then it can push to you to let you know there's something in the queue. I believe you tie it in that way. That is Arcadia, which if people were around in Bristol at some appeared in one of the squares about a year ago, and is normally heard across the site of Glastonbury. Thank you very much. Armand and joined in, as no one else has so far. Please leave feedback for speakers. Um, all the talks are up there for tonight, and those are my contact details. Thank you very much.